All right, all right, all right. I'm Yasio, and welcome, eighth graders. Welcome to Geology 5 with uh, Mr. O and Mr. Kwok. Today, our topic is continental drift. So to get started, I want to take a look at um, the map that we had shown last week about plates. And I want to ask you, which plate is Japan located on? Which tectonic plate is Japan located on? And I should actually make that plural. Which tectonic plates is Japan located on? That is your question. Go ahead, find Japan on this map and write down your answer in your notebook. This will be part of your homework. You'll have three questions for homework, so please make sure that you have this in your notebook. Um, and yeah, go ahead, pause the video, answer that question. When you're ready to continue, uh, hit play. So let's dip into our objectives for today. Uh, content objective is very simple. I want you to be able to understand the theory of continental drift. Uh, language ex uh, objective is I want you to be able to, to explain how mantle con convection causes continental drift. So today we've got a new piece of information, continental drift. I want you to connect this to what you learned last time, mantle convection, you know, put those two together. Our keywords are um, continent, and let's go ahead and look at our last picture of the Earth's plates in order to try and understand what a continent is. Um, continent essentially is just a very large land mass. And so traditionally when they talk about continents, they say there are seven continents. Um, and so I'll just number them off and name them. And there's no number correspondence with the names. So just, just so that you can keep track, so that I can keep track of the, which continent is which, I'll just give them a number and a name. So number one, Africa. Number two, South America. Three, North America. Four, Australia. Five, Antarctica. Six, Asia. And seven, uh, Europe. Um, now, if you look at this map, you'll notice that Europe is actually on the same plate as Asia. And uh, geologically speaking, Asia and Europe are not separate at all. And historically speaking, the only reason why Europe was considered a separate continent from Asia was because people from Europe wanted to feel special. Um, so anyways, just something to know when we're talking about continents, people usually refer to seven continents. I myself, though, um, am a little bit skeptical of uh, that designation. Anyways, you probably don't even care. So let's move on to our next vocabulary word, which is tectonic plate. Uh, if you remember the last plate we saw, we saw all the different tectonic plates uh, all over the world. And those tectonic plates aren't the only tectonic plates. There are smaller tectonic plates within those tectonic plates, those major tectonic plates. So for example, um, Eurasia is a giant tectonic plate, um, but Korea and Manchuria, they're part of a tectonic plate called the Amur tectonic plate just so you know. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, let's actually delve into this idea of continental drift. Um, this idea was developed as early as 1912 by a German named, let me try the name, Alfred Wegener or Wegener. Anyways, he was not a geologist, he, um, but back then, you know, people studied lots of different sciences. Um, he was very interested in, I guess, the atmosphere, and he was also a polar explorer. But when he looked at the map of the world, he noticed that the different continents seemed like they might fit together like puzzle pieces. And so he also studied um, different plants and rocks in the coast of South America, coast of uh, Africa, and he realized that there were a lot of similarities. And so he developed this idea that all of these continents had once uh, fit together like puzzle pieces. And so this was more than 100 years ago that he came up with this idea. But at the time, um, most of his peers, most scientists, they were really, really uh, scoffed at the idea. They just flatly rejected it excuse me, they thought it was complete nonsense. And the reason why was um, they thought it was absurd that Wegener thought that there was some force powerful enough, powerful enough to move continents. Um, so they didn't believe that there were any kind of forces that could move continents. And also there was very limited evidence of plates. 
Um, most of the plates that we looked at on our previous slide, they have um, a significant portion of them are in the ocean. And <clears throat> uh, most people at the time thought, uh, most people at Wegner's time thought that the oceans were kind of flat and featureless. Um, so Alfred Wegener, he developed this idea of continental drift. He died in 1930, and at that time when he died, uh, most people did not accept this idea of continental drift. However, as time went on, they began to find more and more evidence uh, to support Wegener's theory. Specifically, um, they began to map the bottoms of oceans, and they found out that there were these huge mountain ranges. There was evidence of um, divergent uh, boundaries um, within the ocean and so they began to realize there's more and more evidence of actual plates in the earth and because of that uh, they began to test this theory of continental drift again and again until it became what we call a scientific theory. Um, scientific theory is a hypothesis that is tested again and again and again and that hypothesis is um, shown to be the most truthful model for what the evidence shows. So continental drift. Um, eventually, scientists were a, are, have been able to figure out exactly how far our continents move every year. It's about two centimeters. It doesn't seem like a lot, but if we think about um, two centimeters over what we call a geological time scale, like millions and millions of years, um, then those continents can actually move quite a bit. And in fact, once every 250 million years, all the continents uh, usually crash together to form one giant supercontinent. Um, and the last supercontinent that existed was called Pangaea. And Pangaea very much fit um, Wegener's idea of what the, um, how the continents fit together. Uh, let me go ahead and get my pen out. And we can see right here, we have South America um, pushing up against Africa. And it also sort of nestles comfortably into North America. Um, we have Antarctica here um, next to Africa, India, and Australia is kind of turned on its side. And then right here we have North America and Africa pushed up against each other. And so at the time, um, there was a convergent plate boundary. Let me see if I can. A convergent plate boundary, if you remember our hand gestures for definitions. There's a convergent plate boundary between North America and Africa. And so at that point, there was a giant mountain range called the Central Pangean Mountains. And as I mentioned before, these new mountain ranges, um, <clears throat> because they're new and because they're formed at convergent boundaries, they are very tall. And so the Central Pangean Mountains were a tall, majestic, bare, snow-capped mountain range located in central Pangaea. And let me go ahead and circle this for you. So these are the central Pangaean mountains. And so on one side we have North America, and on the other side we have Africa. And in the middle we have this giant mountain range. So today we can see um, the central Pangaean mountains both in North America and Africa. So in North America, um, the part of the central Man Pangean Mountains that remains there are the Appalachian Mountains. My mom lives by the Appalachian Mountains, so I've actually been here. Um, so the Appalachian Mountains are a mountain range that runs along the east coast of the United States. Um, my mom, Mom Dukes, is down in Tennessee, so um, she lives in eastern Tennessee, so she's right around this area here. Um, and anyways, if you look at the Appalachian Mountains, they, they're not tall, majestic, and they're not bare rock. They're actually um, rounded, they're very low, and they're covered with trees. Uh, so the question is, what happened to the tall central Pangaean Mountains? Um, go ahead and, I don't know, take a couple minutes, think about it, um, try to write an answer in your notebook, and this is part of your homework too. I don't want you to like spend all day contemplating this. Um, so yeah, just take a few minutes and think about it. If you're not able to come up with any answers for homework, just go ahead and do, uh, do a Google search. Find out uh, what happened to the Central Pangaean Mountains. 
Now let's move on to the other side of the central Pangaean Mountains in Africa. Um, these mountains are called the Little Atlas Mountains in Morocco. You know, I'm looking at this word Morocco and it looks like it's spelled incorrectly. I think I got one too many R's in there. Anyways, just my apologies and I'll, I'll apologize to uh, Say Papa too, because she's always pointing out mistakes in my PowerPoints. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Little Alice Mountains in Morocco. Um, and so if we look at our map of Morocco, here we have the Central Atlas Mountains in that circle, in that red circle. And this is what they look like. This is what they look like below. Um, now, if you look at the Central Atlas Mountains, they look dramatically different than um, the Appalachian Mountains. And so that's our next question. That's our last question for today. Why do these mountains look so different than the Appalachian Mountains? So for homework, you have three things to do. Number one, your entrance task. Okay, please write down your entrance task. Um, next, how come the tall rocky central Pangaean mountains are so, so so small today and three why do the atlas mountains look so different than the appalachian mountains so you can do this in your notebook take a picture send it to me you can also just type it in on a um, uh, google doc and submit it to schoology um, i'll also open up a folder and you can even type in all these answers into the comments as well uh, if you have any questions, as usual, um, please uh, come visit me during office hours every day from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, there will be a link in your folder for the week. Uh, also, you can just send me an email at sjkwok at sejungacademy.org. Okay, thank you. Peace.